Oh, oh, good. We have to okay. hear his responses. Thank Senator Linehelm, thanks for your company. Good to see you again. It's been a long time. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon, Senator. It's been a long time since I've seen you down the barrel of the camera, so it's good to have you on Cheetah Point. You're the man in the middle of the Senate last night, creating all the commotion. Uh, first of all, what do you make of uh, Simon Birmingham's assessment that the vote last night on the Adler gun was, you know, it was inconsequential? It was a Mickey vote. It didn't mean anything. Well, it was consequential to me because it was uh, uh, my attempt to reverse the, the uh, dudded deal they, they did on me. Uh, I was, what I was trying to do was remove the import ban, mm. um, which they reintroduced contrary to an agreement with me. So from my point of view, it was significant. It was also significant in that I had the support of One Nation and the National Party, which, uh, which was nice. Well, you had the, the support of One Nation and the National Party. The National Party, fascinating. I believe that this is the first time in, in the Parliament's history that three national centres have uh, failed to turn up and support the government on a position, so you've created a little bit of history there. And can I just, yeah. as a chaser to that question, Senator, ask you, the government are trying to say that oh, it's a Mickey vote, so who cares, in terms of the national ministers choosing to abstain rather than turn up. Does that fly with you, given that the National Party backbenchers were crossing the floor? I'd have thought, if you're a National Party frontbencher and you know your National Party backbenchers are crossing the floor, that you would, Mickey vote or not, want to show up to defend the government's position, unless you didn't want to show up and defend the government's position. Uh, no, my understanding is that if they're a frontbencher, if they're a minister, and they vote against the government, then uh, they can lose their, their portfolio. And the, it was obvious that I was going to lose right from the start. Labor and the Greens and a majority of the crossbench, well, not a majority, but half the crossbench were, were on the other side of the chamber, were going to be on the other side of the chamber. It was obvious I wasn't going to win the vote. Um, and um, uh, so th there was no point them sacrificing their ministerial careers for a, on an issue that they were going to lose. But they were with me in spirit. Um, I noticed that they weren't there. Um, and well, I think they did exactly you the right thing with by you in their spirit? constituents. But you think they were with you Absolutely. in spirit? So you, you don't think they were just busy as ministers not voting because it's a Mickey vote? You think by abstaining they were with you in spirit intentionally? Oh, yeah, I've spoken to them about it. I, I know their, their private views. I also know that they well, are on, just, respecting just on, the views of their constituents. Just on that, Senator, Their constituents. Because you, you've spoken yeah. to them, right? So you know that yeah. their decision not to turn up and vote was not because, ah, it's just a Mickey, who cares? It's because they can't vote against it because they're cabinet ministers. So therefore, they didn't show up, Mickey or not, because they privately agree with you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they privately agreed with me. They don't agree with the government's position. It is a it is a uh, coalition after all. They're not part of the Liberal Party. They have a coalition agreement. They're in a in a situation where they can take a contrary view from the government um, because they're the National Party, and uh, and they did, but. They didn't, I think the ministers uh, who didn't show up quite rightly said, well, this is an issue that I'm gonna, David's going to lose anyway. Uh, no point them sacrificing their career for, on an issue where the result is, is for, foregone. So, um, the, but uh, two of them uh, voted, crossed the floor, um, sat on my side of the chamber, and uh, it was greatly appreciated. I also think there's a nearly, a, near enough to a million um, uh, licensed firearm owners in Australia if the National Party wants to maintain its, its base, um, it needs to reflect their views. And that, you know, the National Party has historically been on the side of um, farmers and other and sporting shooters who use firearms. Senator Lionhelm, everyone knows where you stand on this issue. Uh, you've effectively just put the case that the National Party support you, uh, even though the ministers didn't turn up. Do you think their constituents will understand that that's their position? By not turning up, they support uh, overturning this ban? Well, actually, I think the reason that uh, Senators McKenzie and Williams uh, uh, voted with me, did turn up and crossed the floor, voted with me, I think that was to make it plain what the National Party position was. And so, yes, I think their constituents would tend to look at that and say, yes, I know where the National Party stands. Um, they might have to do a little, more, a little bit more salesmanship to, um, to make their constituents aware that that is their position. Mm -hmm. The Orange by-election is, uh, is evidence uh, as that uh, if they don't keep talking to their constituents, there's a price to be paid. Mm. But um, 
You know, there are lots of issues on which I disagree with the Nationals, uh, but uh, on firearms, they're much closer to me than the government is, and way, way closer to me than uh, Labor or the Greens. That's a fair enough. I wasn't trying to suggest you were in uh, lockstep with them on a range of issues. But on this particular one, you have been dudded by the government in a, a deal that you cut with them for your support on another piece of legislation. Uh, do you have any sense of where this issue might go next? I mean, I presume the Turnbull government hopes this just kind of disappears off into the, the process of the states having to come to some type of resolution. Is there a way that you're going to, uh, in concert with the Nationals, try and keep this on the agenda? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, my main concern is to stop uh, the uh, gun laws getting any worse. There's never been any, uh, any suggestion that, uh, um, of, making, of loosening the gun laws. The, the, the proposal to, uh, well, the ban on the seven-shot lever-action shotgun is, in fact, tightening the gun laws. Um, and uh, then the discussion at the COAG meeting with the police ministers recently was also all about tightening the gun laws. Um, I, I and, and on behalf of the, of the shooters of Australia are saying the gun laws are quite tight enough already. There is nothing new or different about this particular type of shotgun that, that warrants its uh, special treatment. There is no, there's no argument for, um, for tightening the gun laws. So if things stay as they are, that's not particularly bad. Um, if the police ministers can't agree, what will happen is five, five shot lever action shotguns will remain in category A. You can't import uh, seven shot uh, lever actions, but you can buy a magazine for a five shot Adler, the Adler brand, and mm -hmm. change it to a seven shot if you want to anyway. Not that many people want to do that, but it's the principle of, of always taking a backward step. So if we think about the legislation coming down the pipe in the next few days, that's going to include the ABCC. You've said you uh, haven't committed to it. You're still in negotiation with the government. Will you bring this shotgun ban back into those negotiations? No. Um, the, the, I mean, after they got onto the front page of The Australian and the so-called guns for votes uh, debate, which was always a load of crap, but the, the way it got construed is... There's, there's, no, there's no scope there to, uh, to bring that into the discussion. I'm talking about other issues on the, in the context of the ABCC now. And, Are those, do those um, and issues relate to the bill itself? Do they relate to the, the issues within that legislation or are they uh, extraneous to it? Well, both. Um, there are some aspects about the ABCC that um, I don't much like and we're looking at whether or not we can amend uh, the bill to uh, remove at least some of the bits I don't like. Although I think the truth is the, the, bills, the bits that I don't like overall are central to what the bill is intended to achieve. So I think there's very limited scope there. So what I'm saying to the government is if um, I've always said I'll never vote for an increase in taxes or reduction in liberty. The ABCC, if it passes, will be a reduction in liberty. It's quite coercive. So therefore um, what I want if I'm going to vote for it is a, an increase in liberty somewhere else so there's no net loss. So we're talking a, around a range of options about what that might be. Can I ask you, Senator Lyonham, I was talking to Simon Birmingham a little earlier about their VET bills that they're trying to get through the Senate over this sitting fortnight. What do you think the chances mm. are of him succeeding in doing so? We spoke a little bit about this yesterday. Well, um, it, it's a bit of a mixed bag. From my point of view, it's, it's trying to... Uh, bring the very concessional loan system under some control, but in the process of setting up a, a bureaucratic oversight of, of uh, tertiary education, so the bureaucrats will be deciding what courses should attract loans and how much those loans should be. In other words, how much the, the courses should, should cost students. Um, to, my preference would be that the market would work all that out, but I would also like uh, taxpayers' money to be used a little more responsibly instead of some of these, the, these loans really, they never get repaid. Um, my understanding is that there is an acknowledgement by most of the Senate that something had to be done with the vet fee thing. It was just running rampant, it was being rorted and so forth. I wouldn't be at all surprised if uh, there's fairly general support for it and, and it goes through without too much opposition. I don't, it's far from ideal, I don't particularly like where it's landed. And even Simon Birmingham, I think, says it's an intra-measure until they work out what to do next. Mm. 
Uh, Senator, in the past you've had some pretty sharp criticism for the government on its uh, ability to negotiate with the crossbench. Uh, the government did have a win last night with the registered trade organization's legislation. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they're getting better at that type of negotiation? Oh, well, depends what day it is. Um, some days they're better, some days they're not. Uh, I still think they, they make fundamental mistakes. Uh, they work on a purely transactional basis. And uh, so, you know, when they, when they need the benefit of the doubt, you know, a bit of goodwill or something like that, uh, they haven't, haven't put it in the bank. Can, can you um, spell that um, out for, for us a little bit, Senator? So what do you mean by that? So they deal on a transactional basis, well, but when they need a bit of goodwill, mm. they haven't got it from you guys. What, what do you mean? Well, I, this is an overstatement, but, but if I want something from the government and they don't think they need me for any particular reason, it's all very hard and all very difficult and, uh, you know, they're, they're always cordial. It's never acrimonious, but no, we can't do that. No, we don't think that's, that's doable, that sort of stuff. When they want something from me, you know, all of a sudden things change and let's, let's discuss, let's negotiate. Um, that's a purely transactional um, uh, way of dealing with me. And yet there are plenty of times when there's a motion in the Senate, there's a censure motion, there's, well, there was the motion to disallow George's uh, legal, legal directive regarding the Solicitor General. Um, you know, they, they were very anxious uh, at one stage before they withdrew it that that not be, uh, be adopted. Um, at a time like that, uh, goodwill kicks in, you know. You'd, why would a crossbencher like me care either way about that sort of thing? It was a fight between a, a bunch of lawyers. And um, uh, so, you know, goodwill helps, you know, when you least expect it. They don't do much to build up the bank of goodwill. How does it said. compare to the Labor Party? I mean, I know you've only dealt with them on a basis of when they are in opposition, not in government, but you still negotiate with them mm. through things. How, how does it compare? They, they do spend a bit more time building up relationships, although, although it must be said they did more in the last parliament they do, than they're doing in the current parliament. Um, they're, uh, yeah, they, uh, they're not quite as well organised in the Senate, um, the Labor Party, as they were in the last parliament. They've lost their whip, and McEwen from South Australia, rearranged a, a number of positions, and they're still sort of getting, getting settled. And I think the crossbench is uh, not high on their priorities at the moment. Um, but... Typically, the Labor Party is more into relationships and, and maintaining contact and talking to us and that sort of thing than the government is. Mm. All right, well, Senator Lionhelm, we know you've got to question time and a whole range of uh, activities there at Parliament, but thank you so much for taking time to be on To The Point. Thanks for your company. Pleasure. Thank you.